Hi, I'm John Farrell, Director of the Energy Democracy Initiative at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance, and here to talk about community power opportunities, in particular, how community choice aggregation can allow cities to advance local priorities and affordable electricity. I really just want to start with a quote I think is very telling from Franklin Roosevelt, president, of course, uh, during the Great Depression, about public power and the importance of having local authority and choice. As he put it, public power is a birch rod in the cupboard to be taken out and used only when the child, in this case the utility, gets beyond the point where a mere scolding does no good. And I think it just highlights his understanding that you always need to have leverage and you always need to have accountability. And that without that, it's very difficult to be successful at uh, promoting local priorities and initiatives with an energy system. So municipal utilities are a what Franklin Roosevelt was referring to, and of course over 2,000 U.S. cities uh, have publicly owned power companies, but most of them were formed 100 years ago. There's been very little transition to and from, uh, and there's a lot of reasons for that, including efforts by incumbent investor-owned utilities to stop public power takeovers. Uh, but there's a long history of municipalities running their own electricity systems, uh, gas systems, water systems, etc through municipal utilities, but 2,000 cities have their own municipal electric utility. Another thing it's important to understand is this convergence between those cities that have local control and the 150 cities representing 100 million Americans that have 100% renewable electricity or renewable energy goals. There are now, uh, Sierra Club has now been tracking them over uh, many years and been working with advocates and city elected officials in many cities to help them realize and establish goals that align with their climate and pollution and economic development goals. So in this context of cities having their own authority and many cities, like I said, representing 100 million people wanting the opportunity to uh, execute on cleaner energy systems, what we find is that of the cities that have made 100% commitments, only the ones that have local control, that have community power, have been successful. Largely cities that have public power, have a municipal electricity system, but also including some cities now that are in environments in the nine states that allow for community choice aggregation and where they're able to make the choice about where their electricity supply comes from. So in some ways, it's no surprise, right? Communities that want 100% renewable energy can get it if they have the choice to do so and uh, it is only those cities that have that choice that have been successful at achieving that goal so far. So I just want to give a, a little bit more information on who I am. Uh, I'm one of the two co-directors of ILSR, uh, the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. Our focus is building local power to fight corporate control of the economy. And as I mentioned before, I direct the Energy Democracy Initiative, uh, where our focus is really to give communities more decision-making power over their energy future. Uh, my background on, on uh, public power and community power is that I am the author of Community Choice Energy, an alternative to electric monopolies that enables communities to center people on the planet that was uh, published in February 2020. I also host a great podcast called Local Energy Rules. Every two weeks, we talk about powerful stories of local renewable energy, including actions that cities are taking around climate. And you can find me on Twitter at John F. Farrell, as well as all of our work at ILSR.org. Back to the conversation about community choice and how it's a growing source of power. So we have, as I mentioned, these 150 cities with these commitments to renewable energy. We have as well a uh, strong focus on renewable energy. And, and we have, so we have a lot of cities and a lot of uh, residents in those cities that are very interested and passionate about how they can advance clean energy. And community choice energy now uh, allowed by nine state laws uh, is enabling cities to make those kinds of choices to advance that goal. And uh, so you can see on this map here, uh, it's a map on ILSR's website called our Community Power Map. Uh, it highlights uh, state policies that enable more community power. And in particular here, you can see all of the different community choice agencies in the different states in purple uh, that allow it. And here's three, I think, important stories about how this is a growing source of power for communities. Uh, in New York, uh, where the law was passed in just the last couple of years, over 50 cities and towns have created community choice programs, most of them in the past 12 months. In California, over 170 communities have formed 21 agencies serving 4 million customers with several new community choice agencies in development. And in Massachusetts, over 150 new community choice cities uh, have established their own power supply uh, since 2015. 
in, across all nine states that have community choice programs, including a few that are so new that the programs really haven't been stood up yet, uh, about 12% of electricity sales uh, flow through these community choice and en uh, energy agencies. And you can see a little bit more detail about the share of sales and customers across the uh, different state programs uh, on this slide uh, with the bar chart representing both percentage of sales and customers with California, of course, far in the lead of most, but uh, Illinois and Massachusetts uh, not too far behind. What I really want to emphasize about the importance of community power at its most basic element is the notion of leverage. It's just like you know going shopping at Costco or Sam's Club or some other big warehouse store. It's about buying in bulk. So rather than having, as you do in some states, policies allowing individuals to choose their electricity supplier, where the individual really only has the market choices that are given to them by providers, by shopping together as a community, a community choice agency can go out and demand new products and services because they're buying in bulk. And they're not only doing that, but they can aggregate across many cities. So you can see here a map of uh, Costco locations. Costco is successful at getting good deals for its customers, not just because it has a single warehouse where it buys lots of things, but because it aggregates many, many warehouses across the country. And in California, where you also see a lot of Costco's, there are a lot of community choice agencies, and they're now working together to buy power, for example. Community choice also means more meaningful choice in terms of where energy comes from. So there are, for example, opt-up programs where uh, customers are allowed to uh, opt for a more renewable energy supply than their default supply. So in Marin County, California, Marin Clean Energy Local Soul has 100% local solar electricity supply, and it's an option for customers. On the other hand, you have uh, Portola Valley and Peninsula Clean Energy, also in California. It has a 100% renewable default plan, and customers can opt down. Customers, of course, can always opt out of uh, community choice and go back to getting electricity from the default electric supplier. The other thing that community choice agencies are quite good at, in addition to buying in bulk and giving more meaningful choices to customers, is that they're really good at investments in renewable and local energy. So this chart here, uh, taken from an NREL 2019 study, shows that um, there are significant voluntary green power uh, purchases made by community choice agencies across the state's uh, where they are allowed, uh, representing significant investments in clean energy that wouldn't otherwise be developed. Uh, you also see that um, this report from CalCCA, which is an advocacy group representing community choice agencies in California, shows that they hit a 3,000 megawatt mark for new long-term contracts for clean energy. In other words, they're buying and creating new clean energy resources in California as a result of these uh, community choice agencies coming together. Uh, as well, community choice uh, agencies are sig more significant in offering either 100% options or 100% default apply options across many of the different states. So generally speaking, being a customer of a community choice agency is much more likely to allow an electricity customer to get a cleaner energy supply if they would like. And we also find that a lot of these agencies are really focused on buying their power more locally. This chart doesn't entirely capture it. Again, it's from that NREL study uh, where they looked at national, regional, and in-state procurement. Obviously, some states very high levels of in-state procurement for their power, but as that Marin Clean Energy example offered earlier, it also means sometimes buying all of their electricity within the ge geography of the community choice agency, something that most utilities do not offer. The last thing I want to discuss is how community choice agencies are really able to advance local priorities in a way that typical utilities are not. Redwood Coast Energy Authority, for example, uh, and you can listen to a podcast interview we did with Matthew Marshall, its executive director, uh, is about four hours north of the Bay Area uh, in a fairly rural part of California. The, the county that it serves about pop, has a population of about 132,000. One of the things that Matthew said in our interview with him is that community choice agencies are interesting, an interesting model because it's one of the few times where government is actually the faster, more nimble entity. And you can see that in their investments in a microgrid for the airport, uh, the way that they're integrating the local forestry industry in their procurement plans for clean energy by doing more biomass, in their network of high-speed uh, uh, electric vehicle chargers along the coastal highway corridor, and their uh, investigations of offshore wind power. Uh, an ample resource in, in their neighborhood. You can also see that in the jobs and economic development focus of the East Bay Community Energy Agency, they got over $5 million in a two-year local development business plan budget 
uh, I know it's Jessica Tovar, an, uh, an organizer with the, in the East Bay area. You can listen to a podcast that we did with her, and she talks about how one of the really key pieces of the foundation of this community choice agency was how can we bring more money, more jobs, more workforce development for the clean energy economy into the community. So not just about where do we buy our electricity, but how do we spend those dollars in a way that it has real significant local benefits. So if you want to read more about uh, ILSR's work on community choice energy, how community choice energy agencies are really pushing the envelope on uh, procuring more local clean energy, you can see more in our February 2020 report on community choice energy. And I thank you for your time.